from the magnificent Midwest, it's the Suzanne Benker Show, where men and women are equal in value, but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week as we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives on men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. So motherhood has never been easy. But compared to today, our own mother's experience was a walk in the park. Case in point, I recall a friend who told me how her working mom friends are stressed to the max trying to get dinner on the table every night. And when she brought this to her mother's attention, her mother reminded her that in her day, mothers weren't responsible for working a full-time job in addition to getting dinner on the table. Getting a healthy dinner on the table was the job, or at least a big part of the job. To give you an idea of what the modern mother's experience today is like, I'll read from a 2019 Facebook post from mother of three, Sarah Buckley Friedberg. She created a mock to-do list of what she claims society expects of mothers today, and it went viral, big time. I'm going to read a little bit of it now. It's rather long, so I won't read the entire thing, but you will definitely get the gist of it. Society to Working Moms. Go back to work six to eight weeks after having a baby. The baby that you spent nine to ten months growing inside of your body. Go back to work before you have finished healing or have had time to bond with your baby. Keep your mind on work and not your tiny helpless baby that is being watched and cared for by someone other than you. Make sure to break the glass ceiling and excel at your job. You can do anything a man can do. It's your job to show society this. Show the world that women can do it all. Rise to the top of your career. Also breastfeed for at least a year. So take two to three pumping breaks a day at work, but don't let it throw you off your game or you'll lose your focus. Also, lose that baby weight and get back in shape as quickly as possible. Make sure to get eight hours of sleep a night so you can work out, work, and care for your family. But also, get up at 5 a.m. to work out, unless you want to do it after your kids go to bed when you need to clean the house and get life ready for the next day. And you know, sleep. Maintain a clean, Pinterest-worthy house. Take the Christmas lights down. Recycle, be Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, the Birthday Planet, the Poop Doula, the Finder of Lost Things, the Moderator of Fights. Be fun, be firm, read books, have dance parties. Maintain the schedule for the entire family. Birthday parties coming up, make sure to have presents. Ensure the kids are learning to swim, play an instrument, read, ride a bike, be a good human being, eat vegetables, wear sunscreen, drink enough water, say please and thank you. Don't forget that they need to dress as their favorite book character on Monday and wear something yellow on Thursday. Oh, it's totally your call, but most parents come into the, come in on their birthday and read to the entire class. In case nobody told you, you have more than one kid, you will need to buy new shoes approximately every other day. See also winter coats, shorts, pants that aren't four inches too short. There will never be matching socks or gloves for any men, member of the family ever again. Hey, kids need lots of doctor's appointments, monthly as babies, every time they're sick. Specialist appointments, especially if any of them have extra needs. At least two school conferences a year, IEP meetings if applicable, parent night, back to school night. Sorry, you are now out of vacation time because you used it for all your time taking kids to appointments and when your child, when your child care is unavailable. You should go on vacations, though. It's good to relax and unwind from work. Makes you a better employee. Don't forget that kids need healthy meals. That requires meal planning, grocery shopping, and meal prep on the weekend. But also hang out with your kids on the weekend, since during the week you only get to hang out with them when they are exhausted and angry that you made the wrong kind of spaghetti for dinner. Date your spouse. It's important to keep your relationship alive and fresh. Oh, and hey, you should have a hobby, too. It's important that you have you time. And make sure to have friends. Social time is so important. Surely there is an hour or two left in the week after all of the working, appointments, exercising, cooking, cleaning, imparting lifelong morals and learning on the kids. And then she goes on a little bit more about self-care and how to dress. And finally, get off your phone, turn off the TV, and enjoy your life. These are the good times. Make sure to enjoy (laughs) every minute of life. Because before you know it, this will all be in the past. And then her final sentence is, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to lean out. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) 
That was pretty funny. Um, so here's the deal. This lifestyle that Miss Friedman describes would feel entirely different if we removed full-time year-round employment from the equation. A mother who's not employed, if only temporarily, will identify with a lot of what Miss Friedman wrote, but it won't feel nearly as taxing because all of the employment-related sentences wouldn't apply. So everything she mentioned in there I mean, here's the, here's the here's the thing about her list. It's basically an encapsulation of what it looks like to raise children behind the scenes, mixed with full time employment and breadwinning. And most of those details were actually about mothering, um, including you know being involved in the school and all that. Um, and very little was was on the details of being an employee, but in fact, that little fact toyed changes the whole ball game. The reality is that motherhood was hard enough without a full-time job. With one, it's entirely unmanageable. It is not Miss Friedman. It is not you listening in if you identify with her life. It is unmanageable for everyone, anyone who attempts it, male or female. And this madness exists because for decades, feminists disparaged the work that's involved in raising babies to adulthood and told women to leave their homes in search of greener pastures. Only it turns out those pastures weren't so green after all. As a result, many women who want to stay home feel stuck for they created lives that demand two incomes. As one millennial mom wrote to me the other day, raising children and attending to their constant needs takes up so much mental brain space and physical energy. There are times when my business needs attending. And when this happens, while my child wants to play, I get a lump in my throat. The push and pull is relentless. End quote. This push and pull is an unspoken, unaddressed reality for millions of women who've been encouraged to reject their maternal nature. Just the other day, I had a phone call, or I mean a session with someone who is deciding whether or not to stay home or return to work. And she literally knows not a soul who's doing, who, who is, who's at home with their baby. And she lives in, of course, in an um, urban area in the East coast. And so of course, of course it's going to be very lonely in that environment. Somewhere between New York and California is an entire country where people live differently, particularly in the South, but really all over the country, just not New York and California um, or a lot of States on the coasts. And, and that's unfortunate because it's very lonely to have to live differently than, than everybody else lives. It is, there's just no question about it. In the past, mothers at home were considered and understood to be vital to the health and well-being of children, families, and society. But decades of feminism has insisted that this is a waste of a life and that men have the better end of the deal. And women listened. Miss Friedberg's post hit a nerve and went viral because millions of mothers just like her are looking for support to, as she puts it, lean out. So here I am shouting it from the rooftops. Do it, ladies. Lean out. Not only are you just as valuable of a human being without your day job, women respond to parenting differently than the way men do. In her article, Ms. Friedberg said more than once that her pediatrician husband does plenty at home in addition to his day job, but it is she who carries the mental load. The reason women carry the mental load is simple. They're mothers. Mothers are more intuitive by nature than fathers are, and thus are more emotionally responsive to their children's needs. Mothers were literally at one point connected, physically connected to their babies. How could they not have a unique and visceral reaction to caring for them? As Erica Komisar writes in Being There, 
The ability to nurture is in our DNA as women, but it must be turned on by the environment, end quote. Only it hasn't been turned on by the environment. For decades, female nature has been categorically denied to the detriment of both women and children alike, and for that matter, to men. Mothers belong with their children. There is nothing more natural in the world, which is why when women ignore this biological imperative, everything falls apart. It is true that we've created an economy that in some areas, like I said, such as the coasts, demands to income to maintain. But we did it by insisting mothers couldn't be happy at home and would be letting down the sisterhood if they did. That message came first. The economics came later. All of the income growth in the U.S. since 1970 has come from women working outside the home. That's what raised the GDP, making it harder for families to live on one income. And note the date, 1970. That's when feminists began their push to get mothers out of the home and into the workforce. It was a calculated ideological and political move, and it worked. Married mothers didn't leave their homes en masse because they needed money. They left because they were pulled in a different direction. People need to be valued for the work they do, and the workplace was fast becoming the place to get it. It was this loss of respect, this elitism really, that fueled the dual-income family. Whether or not this country will manage to turn things around doesn't mean you can't. Yes, mothers who want to be home need practical solutions for how to make it work. They need the tools to learn how to live on less, how to use their time at home, how to keep a toe in the professional waters, etc. But first, they need respect for the overwhelming amount of work that is involved in raising babies to become mature adults. Mothers are literally responsible for the emotional well-being of our citizens. The epidemic of mental health disorders in America's young people, which is well-documented, is 100% related to the breakdown of the American family that began with mothers leaving their home, homes in mass. To the cluelessness of Americans about what actually goes on inside the home as mom and baby go about their day. It is not work that is visible to the naked eye. Like the teaching profession, this work is invisible, except to the people who quietly do it. That's why it's so critical that women get the support they need to map out a life that allows them to not run around like chickens with their heads cut off so they can enjoy motherhood rather than resent it, which many of them today do. That's just one reason there's been a sharp decline in women having children at all. There's a completely different way for marriage-minded women to live. By reversing their priorities, by putting marriage and family at the center of their lives and tailoring all other life decisions, academically, professionally, and financially, around that instead, their lives will function more smoothly. You will not end up writing something like Ms. Friedman did. Is it best to do all this when you're younger? Yes. But it's never too late to reverse course. I don't know whether or not Sarah Buckley Friedberg's question at the end of her post was rhetorical, but I'll assume it wasn't. Leaning out is always an option if you're a mother who's married to a steady breadwinner. Too many parents convince themselves they quote-unquote have to work because they don't know how to live on a budget. It makes perfect sense that these parents would assume mothers at home are fortunate or even rich. Otherwise, otherwise, why else would they be there? They couldn't possibly choose to live on less, so they must be wealthy. As Stephen Covey wrote in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Families, it's easy to get addicted to a certain standard of living and to make all other lifestyle decisions based on the assumption that both parents have to work full time. The point is that there are options. There are choices, end quote. Like canceling cable or going out for lunch instead of for dinner or not going out at all and cooking in your very own kitchen 
or ironing your clothes rather than taking them to the dry cleaner or making coffee instead of going to Starbucks or making your gifts instead of buying them or having dates with your spouse that don't require spending a lot of money or keeping the same car for 10 years or using cloth towels instead of paper towels or checking books out from the library instead of buying them from a bookstore or not spending a lot of money on birthday parties your kid will barely remember are only going on one vacation every other year. Bottom line, lower your financial expectations and start living on a budget. It can be done and people do it all the time, every day. You can even move if you have to. Move to an area of the country that is more manageable from a financial standpoint with one income. Think outside the box. Move away from what you're told by everyone around you and really think about it in terms of your values, your priorities, and do the homework on the math. All of this may sound daunting, but that's mostly because it's so new to the modern generation who've never had to make do. Our digital world has made it so that everyone's used to having what they want the moment they want it. I mean, now you, you just click and something's at your door. This is not at all conducive to a traditional family life and a um, peaceful one and a, or a one income family life. Let's just put it that way, because you have to be able to sacrifice and make do with less, but your trade off, your trade off, because we're so focused on the money piece and the comfort in that sense, but we run around like chickens with our heads cut off and we, and we live like this Miss Buckley described. You don't have to live that way. You can live a different way. And that, so the trade-off of living on less is not having to live that way. It's not having that push and pull. It's taking the moments that you have and the years that you have and throwing yourself into it in a way that allows you to enjoy it at a slower pace, the way it's meant to be done, rather than doing what you think everyone else is doing around you or what it looks like everyone else is doing or what everyone tells you you're supposed to be doing and having your mind solely focused on the bottom line. You know, raising a family, money is only a part of that equation. It's just a piece of it. And yes, of course you need money. And yes, you have to be in a place that's manageable. And yes, there's all this, there's all this math to figure out. But I'm telling you, the math is doable for many, many, many people. It's just that no one's showing them how. And they're suffering as a result. If there's anything COVID has taught Americans that I can see, it's that they can live on less if they have to. And sometimes they must. And that ends this hour of The Suzanne Venker Show. Before you leave us, I'd appreciate it if you'd take one minute to give us a review at Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use. If you've done that already, or if you can't leave a review on your podcast player for some reason, please consider sharing the show with a friend or a family member. Word of mouth is the primary way we get the word out about The Suzanne Banker Show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great week.